Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Some major developments have taken place in South Africa's electricity sector over the past few weeks. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about the implications. Hi Terence. Hi Tracy. So the biggest headline grabber was the appointment of Brian Malefe as acting ESCOM CEO. What does his appointment signal? Well, I think it signals that government realizes the importance of getting to grips with the leadership instability that's been created at Eskom. It was really created by the suspensions of the four executives, including Sadiso Matona, the CEO, um, and then later the resignation of the chairman, Zola Tsotsi. So I think they wanted to sort of bring stability back into the uh, executive team. They're still working on sorting out the, the permanent chairman of Eskom. And I think it also signals, one, that there isn't a very huge pool of talent that can move into this position. And Brian Molefi was the sort of obvious candidate, having been in the state and state sector, you know, first at Treasury and then at the PRC, and most recently at Transnet, and playing quite uh, forceful roles in all those, in all those positions. Uh, I think at Transnet in particular, what we saw is that we had to have some bold leadership after Maria Ramos, I think, ran a fairly successful tur turnaround strategy there on the financial front. Uh, uh, Brian Malefi had to come in and really make that uh, and consolidate that in, in practical ways in terms of getting big projects going off the ground in quite a difficult environment. So we've got a post-global financial crisis, much slower growth in the economy, and still pushing ahead with uh, uh, the market demand strategy, which is a, a fairly ambitious program. And I think really got his head around it, got the financing in place, was able to take those bold steps and bring the leaders uh, along with him, the management at uh, Transnet along with him. And I think it's really about bringing that skill, both the f on the financial uh, acumen that he has, as well as that ability to bring people and energize a team around him at Eskom to try and get things back on track. If it's, uh, even if it's only for a short term, you know, it's uh, three months left of the suspension of the CEO. We're not too sure what will happen thereafter. But the minister did indicate that she wants Brian Malefe to be at Eskom for a longer period than just three, three months. Whether it will become permanent, we'll have to wait and see. But I think he does bring a sense of credibility and gravitas to, to the organization that's very much needed. His first statements through uh, into uh, uh, the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee raised, I'm sure, some eyebrows, but I think it's his style of trying to inject new life into that team, uh, bring energy uh, into the job. And even if uh, some of those things are not practically worked out exactly as he outlined yesterday, I think it's more about rebuilding confidence, showing that he's on top of you know, how people are feeling and also trying to fight Eskom's corner a bit more, a bit more assertively, a bit more muscular, to, s to try and rebuild morale back at the organization that where, where morale is very low. And the energy minister also surprised the market with her recent announcements. Yes, I think <coughs> that was a, a, a game changer in many ways. You know, we've been wanting uh, RPPs or independent power producers to come into the sector on a bigger way, especially given the problems at Eskom and the very big delays around uh, Madupi and Kusilia. I think Brahma Lef is an, a confirmation this week that the projects are going to really be delayed uh, much longer than we initially thought into the early 2020s. I think, you know, it raised uh, the trickiness around these mega projects, especially projects that were undertaken without proper engineering designs, without a financial plan, and done, you know, in, in haste when, we, you know, we, you can't really do that with any project. But you can see it's coming back to bite Eskom, and therefore RPPs are going to be more and more crucial. And basically what uh, Minister Tina Jomat Pedersen has done is that she's opened the way for a major scale up of uh, RPPs in the South African market, acceleration and extension of the renewables program very aggressively. So we've already uh, procured uh, nearly 6,000 megawatts of renewable energy capacity. Um, and she's going to add another 6,300 megawatts allocation to renewables. So we can see that it's going to be a, a, a really a doubling up over 10,000 megawatts of renewables. And those are being introduced generally on time and on budget uh, with about 160 billion rands worth of private capital now behind these projects. But it's not only in the renewable space that she, I think, surprised on the upside where she has given you know, firm indication that the coal-based load program 
is moving ahead and we're going to be procuring around uh, 2,500 megawatts there and then over th uh, 3,000 megawatts of gas to power. Now gas to power is a bit more tricky because we need to secure the gas but uh, there's going to be a request for information which is the pre-tender phase just to get a feel for how this, these gas projects could be developed and on, on what basis that fuel will be imported or developed locally. Um, so <coughs> the, we got, uh, so it's a major advance again on gas and then also on the cogeneration program which is really a quick win, a bit, l a bit like renewables but even maybe quicker in some instances where industry have got a lot of projects that they can turn to account and an at least 800 megawatts there. So all told if we look at Madupi and Kusile may be coming on in 2021, by that same date we could have about 19,000 megawatts of private power uh, into South Africa's energy mix if, if as advertised in, in the way the minister outlined it, the programs then evolve. Uh, but that is a major change uh, in South Africa's environment. You know, we've got about 43,000 uh, megawatts theoretically available through ESKIM and the IPPs at the moment. And, uh, you know, 19,000 megawatts is nothing to sneeze at. So we're seeing for the first time, I think, real impetus behind the RPP program beyond the renewable space. And on a quieter level, the regulator is busy deliberating rules that are potentially sector changing. Yes, <coughs> the whole world is going through major changes in its electricity sector. And uh, one of the big changes is allowing people to become what they call prosumers, so producers and consumers. So shopping centers, commercial businesses and households start putting in uh, their own power generation capacity. In South Africa, that would mostly be uh, in the form of um, a solar, rooftop solar, photovoltaic, um, but there's also potential for things like fuel cells and things like uh, other technologies. We're already seeing in Johannesburg a fuel cell uh, project that's being developed. So uh, the regulator is looking at the rules. At the moment, this is taking place in, a, in an environment that's, that's not very clear. Municipalities have been making up their own rules and we've already seen some investment in the space. But there is potential downside both for the municipalities, for Eskom, and also for the electricity system if this is not well managed and well introduced. Definitely on the, um, uh, the utility and the municipality side, there's a revenue implication because suddenly people will be expected to sell their electricity, not just consume. So what revenue used to come in <coughs> to the municipality or to Eskom might start uh, evaporating and it needs to be managed. Uh, but I think more importantly is how you manage the grid and whether you know, the grid is able to cope with these, this distributed embedded generation starting to come on and to be balanced at the same time. So the energy regulator I think is looking at those rules. I think by mid-year we should have much more visibility on what they think the rules should be. That one protects these uh, utilities and distribution businesses like the municipalities and because the uh, of, of the revenue implications. But on the other hand really opens the, the way for investment by you and I into our own rooftop solar system so that we become both generators and consumers of the electricity. And uh, I think it's going to be a major change in the long run, given especially South Africa's solar resource. There's potential for a lot of rooftop solar in South Africa. And we already see it's taking place in countries that have a much weaker resource in terms of rooftop solar. And uh, I think it's going to be a potential a dislocation for the industry. It's going to have major implication for companies like Eskom and municipalities and uh, it's going to have to be well managed so that we don't have a situation where uh, you know the, the municipalities uh, don't have revenue to do a lot of services that they need to provide. Thanks Terence. That is the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.